Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101, and I would like to welcome you to RV 101, Understanding Your RV. Today's topic is how to properly check and maintain vehicle fluid levels. This might sound like a simple job, but properly checking and maintaining fluid levels is crucial to a good preventive maintenance program. Let's see how it's done. It doesn't matter if it's a motorized RV, your tow vehicle, or your daily driver. Checking and maintaining all the fluid levels is extremely important. Something else that's important is identifying the problem when you discover a fluid level low. We'll talk more about that in a minute. First, we want to identify all of the components on the vehicle that require oil or fluids to operate properly. You can look in the vehicle owner's manual to see where everything is located. The manual also tells you capacities and the proper type of oil and fluids required. Today we are discussing what you as the owner can and should do, but it's important you follow all the dealer maintenance and service requirements too. The engine has a cooling system that requires antifreeze and water to operate properly. The coolant reservoir looks like this and you can see the minimum and maximum marks right here. If the coolant level is low, there could be a leak in the system. Check all the radiator and heater hoses and clamps for signs of a leak and look under the vehicle where it is parked for signs of a leak. If you can't find the leak, have it checked out by a reputable service facility. If you need to add coolant, it's important to follow the instructions in the owner's manual. Caution: In some cases, if the coolant is not added properly, it can damage the engine. Only use the type of coolant your vehicle owner's manual recommends and never remove a radiator cap when the engine is hot or under pressure. If the coolant in the reservoir looks dirty or has a brown rusty color, it should be flushed and replaced. Otherwise, follow your owner's manual guidelines for flushing and replacing the antifreeze. The engine itself uses engine oil to lubricate all of the moving parts. When you check the engine oil, you'll see hash marks on the dipstick like this, and there is a full and add mark. Anywhere in between is the safe area. If the oil level is at the add mark, it will take one quart of engine oil to get it back to the full mark. You should check the engine oil on a regular basis. The best way to check the engine oil is with the vehicle parked on a level surface. Start and run the engine until it's warm. Shut the engine off and allow sufficient time for the oil to run back into the oil pan and then check the level. Always use the type and viscosity of oil recommended by the vehicle manufacturer. Never overfill the crankcase with oil. If you need to add small amounts of oil to the engine periodically, it's possible the engine is burning a small amount of oil. If, on the other hand, the oil level is below the add mark, check the engine for signs of a leak. If you can't find any leaks, have it checked by a reputable service facility. Fresh oil has the best lubricating properties, so it's important to follow the recommended oil and filter change intervals in the owner's manual. Some newer vehicles will notify you when it's time to change or replace the oil, fluids, and filters. Automatic transmissions have a dipstick to check the level of transmission fluid. It's important to read the owner's manual for proper instructions when checking the transmission fluid. For my truck, it needs to be parked on a level surface and the engine needs to be warm and running. Next, I need to apply the parking brake and with my foot on the brake pedal, shift through all the gear ranges and back into park. Now I can remove the dipstick, wipe it off and put it back in. This ensures I get an accurate reading. Remove the dipstick again and look to see where the fluid level is. It should be somewhere between normal and hot on the dipstick. If you need to add fluid, only use the recommended fluid and do not overfill the transmission. Transmission fluid should be red in color. If it's brown or smells like it's burnt, have it checked immediately. If the transmission fluid is below the normal level, you need to look for leaks or take it to a reputable service facility and have it checked out. Most people don't consider the transmission as needing the fluid replaced like engine oil. The transmission has service intervals too, and if you are towing heavy loads, it's extremely important to follow the maintenance intervals. The power steering fluid can typically be checked when it is hot or cold, as you can see on the dipstick. Check it when the vehicle is parked on a level surface with the vehicle turned off. If it is at or below the add mark, check for signs of a power steering fluid leak. Only use the recommended fluid to fill the reservoir. 
Anytime you are checking other fluid levels or if the brake system warning light comes on, check the brake fluid level. The master cylinder is here and you can see there is a maximum line and a minimum line. The brake fluid system is a closed system so anytime it is low on fluid it needs to be checked for possible leaks. Note, the level can drop a little as the disc brake linings wear but any significant drop in fluid needs to be checked immediately. Only use the manufacturer's recommended brake fluid. The fluid levels in manual transmissions, transfer cases, and axles need to be checked periodically too. Seals can go bad and start leaking gear oil. One quick way to identify a leak under the vehicle is by looking for signs of oil in the area where the vehicle is usually parked. Other methods are to get under the vehicle and inspect the seals or take it to a reputable repair facility and have it inspected. To check gear oil, you remove the fill plug, and the way we did it in the military is to put your little finger into the fill plug hole to the first joint and bend your finger down. You should get oil on the tip of your finger. If you don't, you can add the recommended type of oil and inspect the component for signs of leaks. There are other fluid levels that you need to check periodically, like the windshield washer fluid and the water levels in the battery if they're not maintenance-free batteries. If you own a diesel, there are items like the fuel water separator filters and the diesel exhaust fluid that needs to be checked and maintained. In addition to checking fluid levels in our vehicles, we as owners are responsible for making sure all the maintenance and service intervals are followed. Read the maintenance section in your owner's manual for more information. Making these simple checks and maintaining proper fluid levels will extend the life of your vehicles, whether it's an RV, a tow vehicle, or your daily driver. Happy camping.